Hey guys, welcome back to Stay True TV. So today we've got something a little bit different. Today we're working on my mum's 1960 Renault Floride. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, one of my first videos that I did was a slideshow of actually fixing this car up. It was actually stored in my dad's shed for over 30 years. And we've done a lot of work to get this thing back up to scratch and get it on the road. One of the problems being, now it's on the road and the suspension's getting used and stuff. The rear, sh rear springs have started sagging. We did replace the front springs when we done the restoration, as they were sagged, but the rear have started sagging now, so we're gonna rip them out and replace them. The other thing we're gonna do is give it an oil change, and as the sump, the seal around the sump seems to be leaking, we're gonna try and sort that problem out so it's no longer leaking the oil. Let's get into it. Just give you a little bit of a run around. Have a look at the car we're working with. And then we'll get in, get the motor running. Get it warmed up and drain the oil. The big 850cc motor. So we're going to drain tray, we're going to loosen this here bolt, drop it into the tray. Alright, we're just going to let that drain out for a few minutes, then we're going to jack this thing up and start removing some springs. While we're waiting for the oil to drain, we're going to go and remove the hubcaps and crack the wheel nuts, so it's all ready to pop the wheels off once it's up in the air. Alright, so we've just gone and wheel chopped the front wheels. Now we're going to jack up the back of the car. We're going to jack it up by the axle. Put a stand under this side and then we're going to move over to the other side and do exactly the same thing. Now I'm going to chuck the jack underneath the drum, jack it up, should loosen this strap off, and we'll undo this bolt up here, drop the strap, and we should be able to drop the axle down, and hopefully it gives us access to the suspension, drop the springs out. Alright, we're going to start with the strap nuts, so this is 17mm, let's get it, we've got a lock nut on there. With our washer and Same with jacket, you can see that strap loosening up there. So that's only a support strap. See that's loose now. So we take them nuts up, that nut and bolt out, and be able to drop that strap down, and then we should be able to lower this down and all that spring and suspension should come out with it.
All right, let's bring this down. Hopefully, the brake lines will be fine. Fingers crossed, otherwise we'll be letting the lines off. All right, that's full pressure released. The spring is loose. So all we need to do is undo the strut at the bottom here. If we get a flat blade and maybe a 14 mil in there. I'm just turning the coil around. Okay. Where the where it starts, so we can get the socket into it, and yes, we do need a flat blade screw. I don't know if you can see it or not. So this bolt head here has got a flat blade cut out on it. So I'm just holding that, and I'm doing the nut on the back end with the socket to get this strut out. Not sure if this is the way we're supposed to do it or not. But... That's one spring out of the way. Go over the other side and do the same with the other side. Maybe needing a spring compressor to put this one back in when we go. No doubt that they are going to be a bit tighter than new ones. Well, it's going to be set up for a couple of weeks while the new springs are being fabricated for it. I'm just going to lift this axle, lift the axle up, and just put an axle stand underneath it just so it's not sitting in the lazy position. Run into a bit of a snag with this one. Handbrake cables caught up on the tank, so we're gonna have to take the drum off and disconnect the handbrake. And I've just resituated where I'm holding it with the jack so I can get the drum off. When we put that back in, we're going to resituate it over the top of the filler neck so it doesn't get caught next time if we want to do this again. So this is a spring that was sagging. Seems to be quite apparent. This one's come straight out of the slot, so must have been a bit shorter. Mind you, she's well jammed in there. So I've got a bit of a gap just underneath the spring down here, sitting into the seat. I'm going to try and get a screwdriver in underneath it and just pry it out. Now we'll go and pull the shocker out. So I have put Celastic on this once before because when we first put the motor in it had a bit of a tendency of leaking around down the sidewalls. So that's, that's not seems to be an issue right now. 
seems to be at the front here we're losing a bit of oil it's not massive but it's enough to annoy us so we're going to try and seal it around the front here and just around the bow of the sump around the front here it's just leaking a little bit so we want to try and seal that we've got some RTP we're going to see if we can get into that and hopefully stop it from dripping All right, now we've got a heap of flat blade screws around the outside of the sump and she should just drop in. Alright guys, so we've just cleaned all the bigger stuff off of these gaskets. They're pretty much all flat and good now. So we're going to be putting some elastic on them anyway. So what we're going to do is these centre strips here and here. They're the bits that are causing us the grief. That's where it's, we're getting leaked through, which when I've actually done the motor build on it, I did read in the forums that that was the case. That these always give a struggle for sealing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under the car and we're going to elastic these two strips in between the bearings and the crank where they're supposed to go and then we're going to glue these strips on to the side of the sump both of these spots and then we're going to put extra glue inside the crevice here so when it goes on these parts are going to be double sided it's elastic and hopefully we'll get a good seal Okay, so we've got our two little strips in place. Now we're going to go out to the sump. And we're going to glue them strips on, onto the sump. And then we'll put some excess glue to sit on the outside of these two strips. And hopefully that does the trick. All right guys, gaskets on, put elastic around the seam, around the holes, both sides. We've put a layer of elastic through the gaps on the spots that are troubling us. We're gonna go chuck it in, in under there, pull it up with a couple of screws, put the rest of the screws in, let it rest for a half hour or so, and then we'll pull it up. All right guys, the sump is back on. Looking nice and clean, tightened up the sump plug again. So we gave it 30 minutes and then we retensioned all these bolts along the outside of the sump so that the elastic had a bit of time to cure to a point and then we pulled it up and then we leave it. So that's going to be resting until we get the springs back from the shop anyway. So Dad's already taken the spring down, that'll be sent off to get refabricated. So they fabricate two new ones out of using one spring because the vehicle's so old, struggled getting parts for this. So it'll be cool, get that back and we'll get them back in. All right guys, that's a wrap for this video. So we've got the springs out, they've been sent away. So they'll be back in probably two to three weeks, no doubt. Takes them to refabricate new ones up. We've gone and pulled the sump off, cleaned it all up, reset them seals, gaskets. Hopefully we're leak free by the time we get this thing back on the road. If any of you out there have uh, Renault Fluoride and have had troubles with leaking gaskets on the sump before, feel free to write in the comments below what you did to fix it up, if there's other ways that we could possibly look at. So on that note, don't forget, like, subscribe, set your notifications for upcoming videos. We'll be back with another video of this Renault Fluoride in a later date. When we get the new springs, we'll be refitting them. So we'll catch you then.